Hey guys, my name is Samia. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I teach wedding photography business education every week here with two videos a week. So make sure you subscribe if you're new here. And today I'm gonna to be talking about what to do when you do everything right. You send a proposal to a client and then you get ghosted or you don't hear back or nothing happens and you're heartbroken and you go into the spiral of negativity and all the things I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do when someone doesn't sign your proposal. Okay, so the first thing is to set yourself up for when this happens. So what that means is have a process for what you're doing when people inquire so that you can have a process for what happens when they don't respond. So for example, when someone inquires, I call them or text them and then I've opened up the communication for it to be appropriate for me to text them. So when I have a call with them afterwards, I have their phone number so I'm sending them a text that says proposal sent. I text them that I sent them a proposal because I've already established that we're on texting basis. Um, and then when they don't respond, I'm a then able to text them, hey, did you get the proposal? Because I've already set that up to have a texting communication relationship from the beginning. So if you didn't do that and you were just on email basis, it would be inappropriate for you to, it would just look really needy and weird for you to email them and then text them, hey, my name's Samia, I'm just checking in to see if you got my email. When we've never texted before, that would just feel intrusive and like not right. Um, so whatever communication style you were doing when you sent the proposal, it needs to be the same communication method that you are using to check in on them finding the proposal. So to get the best response for me is text um, because people don't answer emails. So set up that texting basis and then you're able to check in with them on through sending them a text. Okay, so the reality is even if you're the best photographer in the world, even if you had the best consultation call in the world, there are no guarantees in business and there is no guarantee that anyone in this world will have a 100% booking rate or even a 90% booking rate. So just get that out of your head that if you didn't book someone, you did something wrong because people are so unpredictable and when the people planning their weddings are twice as unpredictable than people in just everyday life because it's so chaotic, it's so much going on. There's so many people like talking to them about what to do. Um, like I've had fantastic consultation calls with couples, really connected with them, really like love them. And then I'm like, oh, I can't wait to shoot their wedding. We have this friendship going. And then get a call that says, oh, my friend agreed to shoot my wedding for me, so sorry. And to them, they were talked into saving money. You know, you just don't know what's going on on the other end. So get it out of your head that like it's your fault because you could have done literally everything right and people still find another option because that's how people plan their wedding and that's what happens. So it doesn't mean that you don't do anything about it. So what you need to do is you need to know a little bit more about what's going on. So for me, um, it's been helpful to send these people who you got a rejection from a one minute survey. So in other words, if you send the proposal and they don't sign it or they tell you they're not gonna book. So what you don't wanna do with this survey is send it before you officially have gotten rejected. So this is for once they've told you you, hey, we're not moving forward. Hey, we booked another photographer. So sometimes people take a month or two to figure out their stuff and then they end up booking you. So this is for once you have been verbally or via email told, hey, uh, we don't want you as our photographer. This is for once you have that rejection, you had the go to send this survey. So do not like open the door for, hey, I know you're gonna reject me. So can you tell me why? Keep it open for when it's open and then once it's closed, this is when you send the survey. So the survey is what it's one minute and I usually text it to them. I say, hey, can I text you this one minute survey to fill out? It really, really helps my business and helps me understand the industry better. It would do me like a great, great deal of help if you were to fill out this survey. So everything needs to be super simple, so keep it simple. It's a three question survey and I have mine right here, so I'm gonna read you the questions exactly what it says. So question one, what did you experience with other photographers that made you book with them? Question two, in what way can Samia Studios improve in the future? And question three is most important, what was the number one thing that contributed to not booking Samia Studio for your wedding? Samia, I don't even know how to say my own business. Samia Studios for your wedding and it's a drop down and you have to choose one of those options. And then I think the options, I don't have them here, but it says like budget, style, personality, organization, professionalism. It's like five or six big things that could have could have contributed to them breaking my heart. So um, that's what I ask. 
and um, it's only those three questions. And um, what, like I said before, set yourself up for th this interaction. So basically, I have a consultation call with almost all my couples, and they're usually really long, like they're 30 minutes to an hour long, like they're a long call. So by that point, most people will fill out my survey because, and they'll say something like, we're, we're not booking you, but we're gonna refer you to everyone. And they feel obligated to fill out this one minute survey because I've already invested so much time into them and their wedding day that most people will fill out the survey. So if you're getting people who aren't filling out the survey, it could be possible that they're not feeling like you invested enough time into them for them to reciprocate it back. Now, it's not always the case. People have totally ignored me a million times, but most of the time, um, people will reciprocate that energy that I initially put out first. Okay, this is why you need this survey though. Okay, so you need to know why people are not booking you for your own sake. It's just as important as knowing why people did book you um, because I'll explain that in a different video, but I feel like a lot of people book a wedding and they feel like, oh, I did everything right, must have been right, and they don't really know exactly what was in the couple's head that made them choose you. Okay, so this is super helpful for you to your business because what you're doing here is looking for and identifying your own weaknesses or just making sure that you don't have any that are alarming. So if somebody said, I didn't book you because of your personality, I would be like, oh, Okay, that's good because I'm me and I think I was, you know, nice and everything and you don't have to like me. So if you don't, that's fine. But if someone said professionalism, I would feel like, okay, they didn't feel like I was professional. This is a problem. Or someone said budget, I would, you know, be one of two ways. Okay, maybe my prices are too high or, okay, I understand this, is, this has to be my price and they couldn't afford it. So it's not my fault because I feel like my price is fair. So there are so many different things that you're learning from their answers and it's really helpful because 90% of the time, at least for me in my business, it's gonna be price that they answer and I'm more alarmed because I'm at a place where I can't serve everyone with the price point I'm charging. So I'm like kind of ready for that. But if it's something else, I'm like, oh, I need to work on this. And it's about being honest with yourself and honest with your clients about what's going on in this interaction and making your business stronger as a result of. So I think this is something that will really, it can hurt your ego, but it's really important for you to be aware of what's going on. So this is a helpful one minute survey that I send. Um, feel free to copy it and send it to your people who are rejecting you. Okay guys, that's pretty much it. So once they fill out the survey and I have those answers, then I know where to go from there. So let me know in the comments if you're gonna try this, if you're gonna go back and send a survey to someone or you're gonna make a survey to send to your next um, client. So I also, some people might ask, where do you send this survey? So I actually make a questionnaire in HoneyBook and then I just send it right from inside HoneyBook. So HoneyBook is my bookkeeping software. Um, you can get 50% off HoneyBook in the link below. And also there's an entire playlist I have here on YouTube dedicated to teaching you how to use HoneyBook. Okay, hope this was super helpful. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video later on this week. Bye.